No one enjoys feeling like just a number, especially when it comes to our health. We are entrusting our health and ultimately our lives with our health care providers. So it would be nice to know that when it comes to our health care, we're not just a name on a chart. Personalized medicine is a medical model that focuses on developing customized decision-making and treatment options that are tailored for a patient's individual needs. Along with this concept of personalized medicine is a model known as the patient-centered medical home, or PCMH. The patient-centered medical home is a form of proactive health care that allows for a better, preventative, point-of-care approach for diagnosis and treatment. The patient-centered medical home can also be seen as a healthcare model that fosters the development of relationships and partnerships between patients, physicians, and members of a personalized care team. In this model, a primary care physician acts as the leader of a care team. It is the physician's role to interact with the patient on a one-on-one -on -one basis to get to know them personally, and also interact with members of the care team to promote a coordinated care approach between the care team members. So why is it important to have a physician that knows and understands the patient as a person? Well, this patient-physician relationship is important, for the, is important for the patient because the patient will see the physician working for their emotional well-being in, in addition to their physical well-being. This will improve patient satisfaction. Additionally, the patient will see the physician as trying to work with them towards health care goals as opposed to dictating to them what they need to do to change their health. Also, consider this. Who knows you better than yourself? No one. So when you go to your doctor's office, you're bringing this exclusive knowledge of your health and body along with you. You're bringing this knowledge maybe of what medications or treatments work or don't work for you. You're essentially telling the story of your health and body to your doctor. What your doctor brings to the table is expert knowledge and a particular set of skills designed to treat your health issues. Combining this patient and physician knowledge will allow the physician to create a more organized patient profile that extends beyond the physical. Additionally, getting to know your personal medical history and life circumstances will allow the physician to treat the patient as a whole person. <clears throat> okay. So although the physician is a primary member of the care team, the interdisciplinary teamwork within the care team cannot be ignored. The care team can consist of nurses, pharmacists, specialists, and even individuals to answer any questions regarding medication or insurance coverage costs. Your care team is flexible and can change as your health care needs change over time to ensure that you're always receiving the proper care at the proper time. An example of how information may be relayed throughout the care team could go something like this. I woke up and I wasn't feeling too well. My sinuses are acting up and I have a sore throat. So I call my doctor's office to make an appointment. I go to the office. Knowing that I have a chronic history of sore throats, my doctor communicates to my pharmacist to prescribe my usual set of medications. Additionally, ahead of time, my, my physician contacted a specialist, like an ear, nose, and throat doctor, for me to go to to get a second opinion on my throat problem. How this information is transmitted between the different members of the care team, in this case, from the doctor to the pharmacist and to the specialist, can be achieved through healthcare information technology, such as registries, e-prescriptions, and electronic healthcare records. Healthcare technology, including the implementation of electronic healthcare records, is important in improving coordination between care team members. Electronic healthcare records will allow all members of the care team to have access to any necessary documented information about the patient at any given time. In a sense, this will allow all members of the care team to be in the loop about the patient's progress and allow them to have access to having input into diagnosis and treatment options. Care team members can also receive medical updates through electronic health care record updates to ensure that the patient receives any necessary tests, immunizations, medications, or checkups over time. Ultimately, having access to the patient's medical records and receiving these statuses about the patient's improving health care over time will allow the care team to create a more coordinated, organized me medical model for the patient to follow so that they can set their own individual goals and work towards these goals to improve their health care. So why is this important? Healthcare technology, healthcare is an increasingly expensive industry. Both providers and consumers are looking for ways to cut costs. 
In this sense, electronic medical records can be a great way for cutting costs to happen. Because if a patient doesn't have to keep going over the same information over and over again with different care team members, or undergo repeated tests over and over again, this will save time, money, and valuable resources for members of the care team. An ideology that I like to live by is that it is important to focus on caring for those that have preceded us and for those that will follow us. In this sense, I'm talking about, in the healthcare sense, I'm mentioning that it's important that future generations don't inherit a slew of healthcare problems. This also means that we have to care for those that have formerly cared for us, more specifically, the United States elderly population. By the year 2030, one out of every five Americans will be considered elderly. That's 20% of our population. And as such, healthcare costs are expected to increase by 25%. Did you know that currently, 40% of elderly individuals have heart disease, with over 17 million elderly individuals having hypertension. Additionally, 70% of elderly individuals are overweight. 11 million elderly individuals are diabetic. Last, each year, 8 million urinary tract infections occur in hospitals or doctor's offices. That's where they're diagnosed. And elderly individuals are most susceptible to these urinary tract infections. One in three elderly Americans falls each year. And currently, it's estimated that one out of every nine elderly Americans has Alzheimer's disease. And last year alone, 45,000 elderly Americans were hospitalized due to mismanagement of medication. Currently, current methods for treating these medical conditions involves much inefficiency and unnecessary expense, including unnecessary hospitalization visits, as well as infringement upon the independence and dignity of our frail elderly. Our, elder, all, our older citizens need and deserve a living environment that maximizes safety, health, dignity, and well-being. So how can this be accomplished? Well, the patient-centered medical home method is a good way to start. Integrating the patient-centered medical home model is a good way to have them work within a care team to improve their health care outcomes. Additionally, Although the patient-centered medical home model is just a model, it's not a physical entity, what if you can integrate an actual home into the model? Think of it as a smart home for physiological and behavioral monitoring. In this sense, the physicians could have a daily update about what's going on in the patient's life through measurements of their vital signs. Various sensors can be strategically located throughout the home to obtain these vital signs. Let's say I'm an elderly diabetic patient. A typical walkthrough of my house may go something like this. I walk into my front door, kick my four-inch heels off, and step on a doormat that's in front of me. While I'm standing on this doormat, within a few seconds, vital signs such as pressure distribution on each one of my feet, which is important for diabetics and preventing ulcer for, ulceration formations. So pressure distribution, the weight, my weight, as well as my balance can be obtained. So after a few seconds, I walk into my living room, sit down on my couch, and put on the evening news. While I'm sitting on my couch, I pick up my remote. Into my remote, an a wireless uh, heart rate monitor is installed. So while I'm clicking through the buttons, my heart rate's being obtained. After I'm done watching TV, I'm starting to get a little hungry, so I make my way to the kitchen. In the kitchen, I go to my smart refrigerator, which outputs options for healthier meal and snack options. I scroll through the options and pick a dinner that I have the ingredients for. After dinner, I use a wireless glucose meter to obtain glucose levels. And then following my trip to the kitchen, I go to the bathroom. And the first thing that catches my attention is the blinking light of my automated pill dispenser. I go over to the pill dispenser that's located by the sink, take my daily round of pills for that day, along with a cup of water. Then I turn and look at the toilet. My toilet is specifically designed to obtain urinalysis samples and obtain temperature readings. Then finally, before I go to bed, I decide to take a shower. And my shower is specially created with, with pressure tiles to distinguish whether or not someone has fallen over. Now, if you think about it, the use of all of these sensors was almost seamlessly integrated into the daily routine of the user. Daily things that you do every day, watching TV, stepping on a doormat, using the toilet, those are all things you do. So if you integrate sensors into these products, the behaviors and users of the, the user, behaviors in, of the user will not be changed over time. So this information was all taken from these various sensors and will be sent to a central processing unit that stores and analyzes this, this data. 
So you have all this data, so what do you do with it? Well, the important thing is you, it is sent to an information management system that separates the abnormal vital sign readings from the normal vital sign readings. When an abnormal vital sign is attained, this information can be sent to the system and create an alarm so the user will know that an abnormal or bad so signal was received. Additionally, a main tablet located at a common location in the user's home could be used as a graphical user interface so that they could see their progress over time. And ultimately, maybe most importantly, what happens with this system is that the information obtained from the sensors can be sent to the healthcare providers within the care team. Having a day-to-day -day visualization of what the patient's healthcare progress looks like will allow the care team to paint a more broader, colorful picture of what their day-to-day -day lifestyles are like. This is very important for the care team to be able to create goals for the patients and treatment options for them moving forward. So I've touched upon the importance of the connections between the physician and the patient, between the physician and care team members, and between care team members and information technology. So integrating the, the physical and conceptual patient-centered medical homes is a rather innovative idea. And moving forward, we need to combine this information so that electronic health records will be important for, di for future diagnosis and creating preventative medical approaches. Ultimately, having patient-centered medical home concept combined with the information technology will serve as the foundation upon which connections will be built brick by brick so that these connections and concepts fall under the same roof of the overall healthcare system. And in moving forward, it is very important that we work to improve these connections so that our overall healthcare system, our delicate healthcare system, is preserved. Thank you.